Hey YouTube, this is Kat from Set Free and Pass and today I'm going to be going through the May 2022 version of my live Twin Evil Twin deck profile. So, as you know since the last video, there's been a new ban list that's come out which hasn't really affected my uh, my list as a whole, but it has affected in terms of the meta as a whole. But um, obviously that's meant a few changes in the deck. But as I always do, I'm going to go through the uh, profile in parts, which will be first with the monsters, next being the spells and traps, the hand traps, and then the extra deck cards. I don't usually do the side deck, but what I'll show is the side deck I've been using with the five cards, which I do as freeze to make it nice and simple for myself. But obviously, as I always say, depending on your local meta, your side deck should be built for that. Um, so don't use that as a blueprint. Um, this is just my deck. So let's begin. So let's go into the monsters. So the monsters are very similar, if you've seen in my other videos, are three leaders. And I still stand by this is the most important of two twins. Because of the fact that you can then search out any uh, physical monster, including Frost. Frost is your draw ability. So if you do uh, get uh, the opportunity to search for a live twin monster during your first few turns, you'd always go for Leela because it get allows you to get that additional draw. And then you do have to run three keys of kill. I still run Frost as two. Now, some deck profiles run this as one. I, like I've said before previously, I've tried this as one, two, and three. Two is the optimum uh, version because of the fact that you'll find that you'll be able to use this multiple times. And three is just a bit overkill. And one treat. So treat is a good card because of the fact that it allows you to reduce a monster's attack if they do damage to your um, one of your twins. So um, yeah, really useful. And now what everyone calls the brick of the deck is a kill Leela. Now if anyone saw the live uh, live duel that I put up recently which I'll try and put in the corner around here, I'm sure. Um, you'll see that I summoned this in the first turn to go for game. 4,400 attack does actually do quite a lot. And if you're in a situation where you can bring this out to go for game and then get rid of cards from your opponent's hands, because of the fact that it does have the added ability that um, they can only control two cards when it's right. So, I mean, that, that is helping itself. So yeah, um, that's the um, monsters. Going on to the spells. So, free Sunny Snitch. So, Sunny Snitch, as I've always said, is the rotor of the deck because the fact that it allows you to search for any twin card. So, whether or not that's one of your twins to start, whether it's one of the extenders like your, your Frost to extend. For example, if someone uses Ash or Effect Veiler to stop you being able to use the effect of one of your twins, this allows you to search out. Therefore, you can carry on your play. Secret Password, as I always say, is the Rotor of the Rotor. So this allows you to search out any of your live twin cards. It also allows you to search out your evil twin um, uh, monster in your deck, aka the Brick, as everyone calls it, um, which helps in terms of if you want to fill out your deck as well. And I run two home. So home, um, people have been cutting this, and I think I discussed this in last month's video, but basically I feel that's a bit of a mistake. Always use home as um, basically the backup plan if any of your cards get negated. In the same way that basically if your first twin gets negated or for example it gets destroyed, you can use home then to basically bring out another twin which then starts, extends, whatever your plays. It also works really well for bringing out, um, um, when you're bringing out uh, Dagda uh, uh, from your uh, extra deck because of the fact that um, you can then use Dagda bring out a twin, then link off Dagda after you've used it for its effect. Still run three cross out designators because hand traps still continue to be the bane of this uh, deck's existence. And you'll also see again in the uh, live duel where I use this to stop a, a Fet Vela. I've used this to stop many a Nibiru and uh, Ghost Dog, which is going around quite a lot as well. And in some cases, um, which I won't go into too much detail now, but some of the other hand traps, which you'll see. Also run Call by the Grave, because at the end of the day, is if you're going to run Cross Out Designator to stop, why wouldn't you run Call by the Grave? So that basically gives you four options to stop hand traps. And then basically with the rest, so I run two droplets. This was free, and it does change depending on, well, basically, um, 
the whenever I tend to use this. But I have used this as threes. The two seems to work quite well because I do have a lot of draw power in this deck. Speaking of draw power and abilities, triple tactics. Uh, because of the fact that this meta at the moment, um, monster effects are going to happen during your turn, this is going to be used all the time. I've tried to bump this up to, to three uh, with varied success, but you do get a lot of bricks. So again, most of the cards in here I run as two max because of the fact I find, because of the fact I've got the likes of uh, Frost and Kisa Kill, uh, Evil Twin Kisa Kill to draw cards, that I find the benefit. Still run one part of Avarice. This has been an um, option to cut, but again, as I've mentioned before, it allows you to recycle through your evil twin cards, also through your twins or uh, your hand traps back into your deck, draw two cards. So you'll find you'll use this pretty much most turn twos, threes quite easily. Monster Reborn, because Monster Reborn is great for not only bringing back your monsters, but also your opponents if you need to. I need some spell destruction, so I do run a Harpy's Feather Duster, but this has gone in and out, depending on obviously how uh, everything's going. But this could be a side deck card or a main deck card, depending on how you want to do it. And one of the cards which was brought off the ban list recently, Change of Heart. So this has been in my folder ever since I stopped playing back in 2006, because it's been banned. And then it came off the ban list, so I got to put, bring it out and go, oh, yeah, a bit, uh, there's but Change of Heart, I mean, if you want the ability not only to stop one of your opponent's monsters, but take them, change your heart, fantastic for that as well. So yeah, that's the spells and traps. Well, there's no traps. Uh, it's all spells uh, of the deck. So going on to the hand traps. So my hand traps and additional monsters. So DD Crow. DD Crow is really good because of the fact that quite a lot of decks now are wanting to use their graveyard. Also, it's great because of the fact that if you are wanting to use one of your twin effects uh, to get from the graveyard, Project Designate Target because everyone's running this card. Scythe, still can't work out how this is not banned. I'm sure everyone shares the same thoughts on this, but as uh, it's still here, it's still here. Also, it's great because of the fact I can cross it Designate this if I need to stop my opponent using it as well, which is also good as well. Um, and I run just one Nibiru now because of space, but this could be two or three quite easily. Uh, but again, it's cross set designated target. And also if I do get to use the effects of it, then that's great as well. I now run the two uh, grow spells because the fact it's, again, two, it affects my deck quite a lot. Everyone's using this. So again, it's a cross set designated target, but also affects your opponent's as well abilities. Two Ash, because Ash is Ash, everyone likes to draw special summon and so on, so this also helps from that perspective. Two of that Veilers, you'll see quite a lot, but I don't use more than two of most cards, but Vet Veilers is great because of the fact it allows you to stop your opponent's effects and also another cross that doesn't make target. And then the one Imperm, because Imperm uh, again is not only a good card, but also cross that designator. And I additionally use two Chaos Nephritis. I can never pronounce this correctly, but because of the fact that this is a new addition, and because of the fact that my twins are both light and dark, I can bring this out. And this is quite interesting because of the fact that quite a lot of cards out now destroy. And also your evil twin, Leela, it's a fed, destroy a card. Now if we read uh, Nemphis's effect is it can be Brought out basically when a card is destroyed on the field by a card effect. So, pop a card. You can special you can banish one light, one dark monster, and basically special summon this from the graveyard or from the hand. And when you do, basically what you'll do is you'll banish two cards from the graveyard and one card on their field. So I mean, automatic destruction, disruption, and for the sake of Part of your strategy, bringing out Leela. So you'll see at the end of, say, in your opponent's turn, they might bring out, so you go, Trouble Sunny, bring out Kiss Kill Leela, draw a card, pop a card, bring out Memphis, which might be in your graveyard, banishing because of the fact you're guaranteed to have had um, one light and dark to have to bring out these. Um, and then basically you then go, oh, I'll start banishing stuff from your graveyard and also from the field. So a little bit of disru uh, disruption there. And I've used this. Um, a good effect in a few duels uh, over time. I do misplay it a bit in the, the video which is up, but um, 
doesn't really affect the game much. But again, it's nice to have a Chaos Monster in there. Not a hand trap, but it was one I just basically added in as additional effect. So onto the extra deck. Three keys to kill. Still stand by, this is gonna stay free because you are going to need to bring this out from your extra deck to bring out Leela from your grave. That's usually the case. So later in your game, you're usually gonna have a Leela, so it's just, there's two Leelas. So basically, um, your first turn, generally if you're going first, we'll bring out Leela to bring out keys to kill, uh, Bring out Keys of Kill to bring out Leela. Then Leela's effect will bring Keys of Kill to draw a card. So then say for example, now this is in the graveyard. This is in the graveyard. You've got this out, um, or you've got none of them out. So if you're gonna do a link play, you can always bring out this to bring out this from your grave because of the fact you can pop a card. You're not gonna need more than two of these. You are gonna multiple times bring this out from the extra deck to bring out the Leela from your graveyard. And if you then do get rid of this, this is where the second one comes in. And I go through detail of this, but I find that this is the correct ratio for this particular um, deck because, yeah, that's, that's how it is. Run three Trouble Sunnies. So what I'm going to do is just move these out of the way. So three Trouble Sunnies because Trouble Sunnies, you're guaranteed by turn two if everything's going to go okay. And if you, you can't, then there's a bit of an issue to have used all these. So in your first turn, you're bringing out is gear Leela to bring out one of these. Um, then potentially if you're attacking your attack, you'll then send one of these to the graveyard to bring out these again. Which means that you've attacked with these, bring this out to bring out this and then you've got one left in your extra deck. So yeah, it's really important to run that max. Uh, I also then run one um, Unchained Abomination because access code doesn't work in this deck because of the fact that you get locked into themes when you start using the live twin lines. Um, so with Evil Twins, it's always important to note that when you do use these, you're locked to fiends. And Access Code not being a Cybers monster um, isn't obviously able to do that, but Abomination is a fiend, but also gives you free destruction. And also whenever cards are destroyed, so if you are using, say for example, your leader to pop, you then also get the additional pop from that as well, so it just gives you multiple times to destroy. I also want you one Dark Charmer because of the fact it's quite easy to bring it out and because of the fact Dark Monster seems to be quite prevalent. And think about cutting this out, this will go for Underworld Goddess. Um, but obviously, for the time being, I've got this in here. One Unicorn because of the fact that it's uh, a fiend and also nice, easy disruption. And Dagda uh, because of the fact that Dagda basically plays Scythe and in. Um, also, if you use any of the other artifact cards, whether or not you side deck or that, for example, if you use Lancer, you can bring this out. So if you're playing against a Thunderlease player, you can play this to bring out uh, Lancer, which obviously helps in that sense as well. So, I mean, there are other options. And then the final part of the deck is then, as I always say, I sit with this Sky Cavalry with uh, Downland and Zeus, because if you can use Zeus, use Zeus. So that's the extra deck. So as I'm not going to go into detail of what I use my side, I'm going to just use the five cards that I tend to use. So I'll always use Draw Lot Bird because of the fact that Thunderlease yeah, tends to be an issue and a lot of paper decks are drawing loads of cards. Lancia, which also works well with my Dagda, but also from the things like um, uh, Stopping Decks, which do need to use um, uh, removal uh, from the graveyard uh, as an option. Dark Rule No More, which I use because of the fat monster effects if I'm playing against a um, Sword Soul deck. This is fantastic for that because it gets around all those monsters. Then, depending on your uh, spell destruction choice, I've got Cosmic Cyclone, but this could be Twin Twister, or even things like if you haven't got if Harpy's in deck, Harpy's Feather Duster, um, and other cards like that, but always use that. And I use Evenly Match uh, because of the fat, it's just easy removal. Um, uh, from the field. So yeah, um, that is basically that. As I said, this side deck is dependent on your local meta, so that will change. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the deck. Um, as I said before, um, I'm trying to do an update of this every time a month goes around. But um, this month I've been using this deck and I've made a few changes here and there. But if you like the video, uh, drop a comment. Um, 
whether or not it's uh, to learn a bit more about the deck. I've done a combo video about this before, but that was a few months ago. So if anyone wants to see an update version of that, I might do a new one of that just to go through some of the additional plays, which there aren't really many new ones. Um, obviously, this is going to be um, uh, a good strategy to learn when the supply uh, stuff comes out because Live Twin seems to work quite well alongside that. I think I might pick up to add to this deck, who knows? If I can afford it as well, that'll be another thing. But yeah, if you like the content, um, remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and just drink, drop us any comments. Um, yeah, and this is Kat from Set Free and Pass. Thanks for watching and catch you later. And bye.